Welcome to this lesson. This is a lesson on two particular differential equations that are important for you to know something about. And I just want to talk for a minute about solving differential equations. So to, to review an ODE, an ordinary differential equation, is an equation for an unknown function of one variable. Okay, and it involves derivatives of that function, as we've said. Now, in this course, our primary goals for ODEs are to be able to use them to model change, to be able to you know, approximate their solutions using Euler's method or by solving them on a computer, and also to maybe determine the qualitative long-term behavior, and that's something we'll talk about in a later lesson. Actually solving the models per se, in other words, writing down an analytical formula, a formula for the solution, is not a major goal of this course. It's something you might do more in a course uh, that's dedicated to differential equations. Um, one of the reasons for this is that most, in quotes, uh, ordinary differential equations, you can't even solve explicitly. So there are many, many, many important differential equations where it's not just that you know, you're not smart enough or something or experienced enough to write down a formula for the solution. It's that no formula for the solution exists in terms of the elementary functions that you know. Um, and so that's another reason that it's important to have these other kinds of tools to address differential equations, right? To be able to solve them on a computer and describe their long-term behavior and so forth. Um, with all of that said, there are two basic ordinary differential equations that I do want for you to be able to solve. And this screencast um, is really about those two equations. The first of these equations is dx dt equals kx. So this says a function such that if you differentiate it, you get back the original function times a constant k. And I would like for you to think about this as the reverse of differentiation of an exponential function. And by reverse, I just mean, let's start with an exponential function and differentiate it and see what happens. So if I take e to the 2x and I differentiate, then because of the chain rule of differentiation, this constant 2 pops out in front. And what I get back is my original function, e to the 2x, times a constant 2. If I do the same thing with e to the minus 7x, it doesn't matter that the constant up here is negative. When I differentiate, I get back the same function I started with, but the constant that was up here in the exponent pops out in front. Even if I do this um, with some multiple of, of the exponential function, if I start out with 3e e to the 2x, same thing happens. When I differentiate, I get 3e e to the 2x, but with an additional factor of 2 that pops out in front from the chain rule, and 3 times 2 is 6, which gives us the 6 in front, right? So this is um, 3 times 2e e to the 2x right here. Okay, so hopefully these examples convince you that the solution is c e to the kt, right? So the solution of this differential equation is any constant c, c is an undetermined constant here, times an exponential function where the coefficient in the exponent is this constant k that appears in the equation. And if you want to be convinced of that, you should do the same thing we always do to check that a given function is the solution to a differential equation. You take this and you plug it in. So d dx of c e to the kt is, well, the same function you started out with, c e to the kt, but because of the chain rule of differentiation, this k pops out in front, and that's equal to k times the original function you started out with. So d dx of the function equals k times the function. Okay, so I, I definitely want you to know <laughs> that this is the solution to this equation, and this, as you know, this represents exponential growth if k is positive, or decay if k is negative. And let's go ahead and do an example with this equation. So money in a bank grows at a rate of 3% compounded continuously, um, and I should say 3% per year. Um, and suppose that $1,000 is put into the account in the year 2000. How much money will you have in 10 years? And after how long will your money double? Now, before we can answer those questions, we have to just develop our model, which we'll use to answer those questions. So let's let B of T be the balance in your bank account. And let's let T be years since the year 2000. And uh, the appropriate model here is that the rate of change of B is 3% of B. That's what continuous compounding means. So dB dt equals 0.03 times B. And from the previous slide, we know that the solution to this is that b is some constant e to the 0.03t. Right? Well, we still need to know what this constant is, and we find it out from using the initial condition. 
right? And the initial condition is this information we're given that at the start of time, in the year 2000, when time equals zero, you have $1,000. So you plug in zero for t, and you plug in 1,000 for b. So c e to the zero, 0 0.03 times zero is zero, equals 1,000, e to the zero is just one, so c happens to be 1,000. So we can then go ahead and write down b of t equals 1,000 e to the 0.03 t. Now that we have a complete model, um, we can go ahead and try to answer the two questions asked. How much money will you have in 10 years? Very straightforward, you just plug in t equals 10. So b of 10 is approximately equal to $1,349.86 if you plug into R or your calculator. And the second question is, after how long will your money double? Well, if your money is doubling, you want to know at what time you have $2,000. So you simply set b equal to 2,000 and solve for the unknown value of t. So if you divide by 1,000 and take the natural log of each side, and then divide by 0.03, you find out that t is the natural log of 2 over 0.03, which is about 23 years for your money to double. The second equation, um, which uh, you've actually seen in a previous screencast as a model for various different things, uh, is dx dt equals k times x minus a. And another way of saying this is that the rate of change of x is proportional to the difference between x and some other value. And the solution to this differential equation is a plus c e to the kt, and I want to convince you of this in two different ways, okay? So we'll, we'll kind of do this twice. One way is you could just test that this is a solution by plugging in. So let's do that. For the left-hand side, we have to actually calculate what is dx dt using this as our guess for x. So left-hand side, I'm supposed to take a plus c e to the kt, and left-hand side says differentiate it. But when I differentiate a, it goes away because it's a constant. When I differentiate this bit, I get the same thing I start with, uh, plus a c popping out in front because of the chain rule. So I get k c e to the k t. The right-hand side says take x, subtract a, and multiply by k. So that's taking x, a plus c, e to the kt, then I'm supposed to subtract a, and I'm supposed to multiply by k in front. These a's cancel, and this is equal to k, c, e to the kt. We can observe that the left-hand side and the right-hand side are the same, and therefore, indeed, this function is a solution. Check. All right, there's a second way uh, that we can try to convince ourselves of this, and it is to transform our equation into an equation that we already know. Um, so I'm going to let x of t minus the constant a equal a new function I'm introducing, y of t. And what I'd like to do is take my equation for x and write it as a function, uh, as a, an equation in terms of y instead. Now we see that this, uh, left-hand side of the equation involves a derivative, so I'm going to have to be able to write dx dt in terms of dy dt. Let me just differentiate my definition here. I'm going to take this definition. This is a true equation because I created it. I said this is how y is defined, and I'm going to differentiate each side. From the left-hand side, I get dx dt. When I differentiate a, it's a constant, so I get nothing. Um, and on the right-hand side, I get dy dt. And now I'm going to try to substitute into the original equation. So I want to replace all the x's with y's. Instead of dx dt, I'm going to use this statement here to write the left-hand side as dy dt. Then on the right-hand side, I have k. And x minus a, well, by our definition, another name for x minus a is y. So I get dy dt equals ky. Well, that's the equation you studied previously in this screencast. You know the solution. y is equal to c some undetermined constant, e to the kt. Now we know what y is, but we have to go backwards to figure out what x is. So since x minus a equals y, we have that x equals a plus y. So x of t equals a plus y of t, and y is c e to the kt. Okay, that's the same thing I claimed up here. x of t is a plus c e to the kt. So We've checked that it's verified. I just wanted to show you two different ways to think about uh, kind of convincing yourself that this function x of t is indeed the answer. 
Now let's go ahead and do an example with this. And uh, this is an example using Newton's law of heating and cooling, and it's about murder, all right? So here's the scenario. Um, the body of a murder victim is found at noon on a particular day in a room where the room temperature, because of the you know, uh, environmental heating and cooling system, the room temperature is kept at 20 degrees Celsius, all right? At noon, when the body's found, the temperature of the body is 35 degrees Celsius. Um, you check the body temperature two hours later at 2 p.m., and you find that the temperature's fallen a little bit to 33 degrees Celsius. And the normal body temperature of a living human, which means the body's temperature at the exact moment it was murdered, normal body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. The question is, what time did the murder occur? And the starting point is supposed to be Newton's law of heating and cooling, okay? So here's, here's the setup. We're going to let H of T be the body temperature in degrees Celsius. We're going to let E be the environmental temperature, the, the room temperature in degrees Celsius. T, we're going to measure as time and hours since the body was found. And we'll use Newton's law of heating and cooling, which says that the rate of change of an object's temperature is proportional to um, the difference between the object and the environment, okay? So again, uh, here we're gonna think of K as being a positive constant. So that, think of what happens. If the body is warmer than the environment, H is bigger than E, so H minus E is positive. A positive times a positive is positive, but this negative sign makes it negative dh dt is negative, that means h is increasing, the object's temperature is decreasing, that makes sense if you take something hot and put it in a cooler environment. So you, you saw this in a previous screencast, but this is Newton's law of heating and cooling, um, and this is what we would like to use um, to solve the, uh, the posed problem. So I'm actually going to solve this problem um, rather than having written out text for you, I'm going to solve it with my pen here, um, starting on the next slide. All right, so we start with dh dt equals minus k times h minus e, all right? Then we remember, if we look on the previous slide, that e is the environmental temperature. Um, the environmental temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. So right away, I'm going to go ahead and replace e here with 20, and I'm going to write dh dt equals minus k h minus 20. At this point, it's not obvious to me what to do. Like, I don't know yet what the value of k is. So I think what I would like to do is go ahead and write down the solution for this problem. And we can do that if we uh, scroll back and remember that the solution to this problem, k times x minus a uh, on the right-hand side, gives us that our unknown function is a plus c e to the kt. This is exactly what we have, except that we're calling a e, and we're calling uh, our k a minus k. All right, so what we're going to have is h of t equals e plus c e to the minus kt. So when we solve, we're going to get h of t uh, equals uh, e plus c e to the minus kt. And of course, I just said that this value of e is, uh, is 20. So 20 plus c e to the minus kt. Now there's two unknown things here. We don't know what C is and we don't know what K is, but we can use the given information to find out. So we're told that at noon, the temperature of the body is 35 degrees Celsius. Well, noon is what we decided corresponds to time equals zero, time since the body was found. So H at time equals zero is 35. H at zero equals 35. I'm just gonna plug in that information to our formula here. Well, H of T, we're going to call 35, and that's going to equal 20 plus c e to the, and I'm plugging in time to be 0, so I get a 0 in the exponent here. Well, e to the 0 is just 1, so I have 35 equals 20 plus c. This tells me that uh, c equals 35 minus 20, or c equals 15. Let's take that value of C and plug it into our formula to update what we know about our model for body temperature. So now we know H of T is equal to 20 plus 15 E to the minus KT. 
Of course, we still don't know what k is, but there's additional information that we've been told that we haven't used. We were told that uh, two hours later, so at time equals two, the body temperature is 33. Time equals two, h equals 33. h of two equaling 33 means that 33 equals 20 plus 15 e to the minus 2k. All right, so now we have to do a little work here. I'm going to subtract 20 from each side and divide by 15. So I get 13 fifteenths uh, equals e to the minus 2k. We've got to take the natural log of each side and divide by 2, and oh, sorry, divide by minus 2. And if we do that, I'm going to take a minute here and plug into my calculator. find that uh, k is equal to about minus 0 0.072. Okay, so now we can once again take that information about k that we now know, take it, plug it back into our model for h, uh, our equation for h, and then we'll finally know everything. So let's come over here. I'm going to have h of t uh, equals 20 plus 15 e to the minus 0.072 t. And I think now that we completely have specified a formula for h, we're ready to try to answer this question. And the question is that normal body temperature is 37 degrees. What time did the murder occur? So we would like to set h equal to 37 and find at what time that was true. So let's go ahead and do that. 37 equals 20 plus 15 e to the minus 0 0.072 t. I'm going to subtract uh, 20 from each side and divide by 15. So I get 17 fifteenths is equal to e to the minus 0 0.072 t. You have to take the natural log of each side. Um, and if you take the natural log of each side and divide by negative 0 0.072, you're going to find that time equals negative 1.0. 7.4 approximately. So remember what that means. Time measures hours after noon. Negative sign means before noon. So what this means is that the murder occurred um, at 1.74 hours before noon, uh, which is approximately 10.15 a.m., give or take. So we've come to the end of this screencast, and I just want to go over some of the big goals. You should ask yourself if you can, first of all, just recognize the two basic ODEs that were presented here, because a number of uh, interesting modeling problems give rise to those two equations. You should be able to solve those equations. You should be able to use information, usually initial conditions, maybe other information as well, to determine the constants. Uh, that occur in the solution, and you should be able to utilize the ODEs to model various applications and answer questions. Thanks for listening.